To help you understand how children develop occupations, we will first take a look at what an occupational therapist is and what we seek to achieve with children and families like yourselves, which enables you to master the daily occupations you need to, to live life your way. Firstly, we are child-centred. We focus on what matters to the child and their family. Then, as the name suggests, we are concerned with occupations. Put simply, an occupation is anything a person does day to day, such as work, exercise and eating. We seek to enable engagement, participation and independence as a sort of continuum that you progress through. When a baby is young, we hope that they happily engage when something happens to them, for instance nappy changing. Later we would expect a child to participate in the task, trying to wipe their bottom and washing their hands, and then progress to independence to complete the task themselves, going to the toilet alone, following all parts of the task, and coming back to the task they left. It is important to remember that independence with an occupation depends on each child's age and their development. It is vital that we are realistic in our expectations of what a child can achieve, and when a child might need help, or a task should be adapted. These factors all adding to the child's success in occupational performance. Occupational performance is the interaction between the child, in their environment, doing the task or occupation. This is a model adapted from Mary Law's work in 1996. I will explain this model to help you understand why we consider the areas when trying to support a child's occupational performance. Within the child section, we address the innate developmental features of the individual, considering their physical and psychosocial makeup, put simply, how the body moves and works, and how the child emotionally responds to success. Within the environment section, we consider the places they live, play and develop in, and the people in that environment, mums, dads and teachers for instance. We then split the occupation section into three parts, the tasks the child needs to do, they have to do, and they want to do. As occupational therapists, we use our understanding of occupations to support development of meaningful roles and routines. We all have something to contribute to a task, be it the decision maker or the person that does the task, and innate in us all is the need for predictability which routines provide. Enabling age and developmentally appropriate opportunities ensures we avoid occupational deprivation, that children don't miss out on participating in day-to-day -day experiences and that we ensure a balanced lifestyle. After all, we would all like to spend our time doing what we want to do, but it is important that we also do what we need to and have to do, that we have a balance of occupations and a number of different roles to play.